Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Um, is everybody here familiar with Tsar Nicholas II and any of the history to do with the family? In Russia, of course. Okay, um, Tsar Nicholas II, his family um, back oh, early 1900s, he, um, of course, he, well, he was basically in exile and he was hiding with his family at one point during the war. They had to go from place to place, like safe houses, to try and prevent from being captured and killed. Uh, at one point, they were in what they figured was a safe house, and uh, they went and woke them up out of their beds in the middle of the night, and uh, said, come on down. There was four kids, and the husband and wife. Took them downstairs and set them in chairs, almost as if they were going to take a portrait, and then proceeded to tell them, we're going to assassinate you now, and they did. Um, is everybody familiar with the story of Anastasia? There's a lot of, of things out there on, on Anastasia. There's movies, there's books, there's all kinds of stuff. Anastasia was the daughter of Tsar Nicholas II. Um, Tsar Nicholas II, his sister Olga, kind of fast forward now, when all of this happened, she was kind of laying low through Russia because, of course, she was related with his sister. Um, they, in fact, or at one point, she started feeling a little scared. She figured they were catching up with her, and she thought it would be much more comfortable to get out of the country and, and go. She bought this place. So Duchess Olga... Um, in fact, bought this place in, I believe, probably 1940s, I think it was. Um, so she was here for a few years. Um, she had the, the farm. They were only here, I think, about four years. And her husband got ill. He, she didn't take care of it on her own, of course, so they had to sell. They then sold to Rick Tobin, um, who, you know, their, their relations are... Um, Rick Tovin was, I believe, I don't remember if he was a cousin or if he was just good friends, but I think they were related to the Red Baron in the war. And he was actually one of one of the many that were trying to take Hitler down. He bought this place from Olga. So through the research and through when Kimberly's been here, the different things that she's gotten and then what I've done through research, we've kind of put together what we've come up with, what we think. I mean, this is all what we think is here. It doesn't mean it is for sure, but this is what we've come up with. Um, we think that there's a good chance that Anastasia's spirit is here, simply because um, the history of Anastasia, Anastasia was known to be a very mischievous brat, and it was nothing for her to taunt and torture not only her sisters, but the wait staff as well, um, to trip them as, just as a prank, but if they got hurt, she'd just kind of laugh, like, oh, you know, whatever. Um, that's the kind of thing that Kimberly was picking up, that there's a mischievous child here. Now, she was in her mid to late teens when, when they were assassinated, but nonetheless. Um, we also think... Now, another thing that I've actually just recently got is that uh, Duchess Olga had a, a maid here that she was very close with, became actually her best friend. One of the things Kimberly had gotten was there's initial M, which at one point I thought was related to Anastasia because her nickname in Russia was Milenka or Melenka or something along, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but anyways, that, and that, that meant um, little girl. So, but I've since found out that this maid that Olga got very close to, she, her name was Mimika, um, and she passed in about 1958, I believe. So now we have a couple of things to play with in terms of what may or may not be here, or who may or may not be here. One of the other things that we've gotten, um, and Kimberly has picked up off and on, each time we come, sometimes she'll get a little something different, but there's also a woman, at some point, the, when this place was sold again, it was sold to um, a family who had an aunt, some sort of relative, that her name was Helen. She has gotten the name Helen several times. Um, she used to come from Toronto and stay for extended periods and take care of the children here for the family. Um, she's not very nice. Um, she's uh, from what Kimberly's got. And things that we've had when we've been here hunting. She doesn't like men. <laughs> At all. She's not fussy on men. Um, and she's not very nice. She can be, she can be uh, I mean, I don't mean evil. She's just one of those just women that's just not very nice. The other thing that I've picked up on that I've gotten is that um, we do believe that there's an Indian spirit here um, who was very well known in Campbellville. He was like a nomad Indian. He really didn't live in a fixed address. He just kind of wandered. His name was Half Day, and we have gotten responses that he is in fact here. He's buried not far from here. There is a cemetery. When he died, 
due to the fact that he really didn't have anything or anyone, they did bury him in the cemetery not far from here. Uh, so that's another spirit that is here. The greenhouse up at, were you here when the greenhouse, when that happened with the greenhouse? Bump. Were you in there when it no, happened? Or you were in here. You were in, I thought yeah. so. Okay, you were with us when yeah. we were here. Um, the greenhouse at the far end by the heritage barn, it has what we, as far as we know, there is a, some children, some Indian children buried underneath there. Um, and we figure that the, the mother and father are there, kind of watching over what's what's going on. Um, the barn next to it, which is uh, the Heritage Barn, is a militia barn. It was not originally here. It has been moved from another location. I have no idea when. It's not part of the original property. It has been moved here. We have gotten stuff in there. Um, when you're upstairs, now I'm not too sure they were going in it. The owner, the owner of the property, really doesn't want us going into the greenhouse all the time, so I'm not sure if we're going in this time. The greenhouse and the militia barn, you can investigate in the bottom, but he doesn't want us up in the top. Um, up in the top, and actually sometimes you get, you feel different things in the bottom. In the top, you will quite often, um, almost like a vertigo up there, you'll get kind of woozy and lightheaded. You will occasionally feel the boards kind of do a little rumble, and there's no trains, there's nothing here, we're not having earthquakes, and it does happen pretty much every time we go up there. Uh, but you will sense different things, you will feel um, sometimes your stomach will feel a little bit queasy or something along that line. If you do, if you can just ignore it, it will go away. If it's bothering you, just say, you know, whoever's bothering my stomach, it's it's not working and you can really stop. It's just their way of, if they're agitated, it's their way of letting you know they really don't want you there. And they will play with you physically. But just like I said, say something. Fight it out because that's how they're trying to get rid of you and you don't want them to succeed. So if you can try and just let it go, you may not feel it at all. But if you do, and if it gets too much, then by all means let one of us know and then move away from the area and it will go away almost immediately. You'll be fine. Um, the greenhouse, that time back last December, um, there was a group in the greenhouse and it shook violently for about 20 seconds. You'll see the structure. It's solid. It was not windy. And we thought something had exploded out here. It was incredible. And we had all these doors shut in when we were in here. So that gives you an idea, because it's way over there. Um, Kimberly's son, Christopher, comes out with us quite often, kind of on a security to help us out and whatnot. And um, he was quite funny, because he, he ran to the door, which shit, <laughs> it ran out the door. So, yeah, so that was kind of me. We had a skeptic that was in there at the time, and he was doing everything he could to debunk it. I don't think he ever did. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was kind of interesting. Um, there are things in here, and as you come through, Whoever's taking you through will explain to you the areas and what's going on. There is a stall down at the very, very end on the left-hand side. No horses will go in it. They will not go in there. They freak right out, and they, they won't even go in. You, you can't push them. You can't feed them. You can't try to get them in. No, out. It's storage now. That's all they use it for. So that's, uh, that's somewhere that's a point of interest when you're investigating. Maybe go in and see uh, with the K2 meters, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the red barn over there, I don't really know if it, it's probably just whatever spirits are following us around through here. You will get stuff in there. We usually have a spirit box set up in there. And you'll, uh, you'll, hear, well, you'll hear what that's kind of neat because it's on a different frequency. It's more to the frequency of what they would communicate with. So you can ask questions and you will, in fact, get answers back, which is really neat. But as, again, we'll explain that as we go through. So is there any questions at all? Everybody's pretty clear kind of what's going on. You're okay? Everything's cool? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we'll get started. Again, if you have money, anything of value, chains, that kind of thing, they do go missing. They do come off. We have had people, and they've come off. So.